fans. We're coming back to you live from 401 Games this afternoon. It's round three of our GNK on Sunday. I'm your host, Timbo Slice. And joining me today is uh, Emperor Poppenhausen. What's your, what's your name on Vassal again, sir? Throwdown Horton. Throwdown Horton, Aaron P. Thank you for joining me and uh, not leaving me all by my lonesome in this booth to prattle on, uh, Aaron. Thank you to our uh, between 40 and 50 viewers who have been watching our stream so far today. Uh, we're happy to have you. Apparently, we've had some friends of ours from other countries chime in and uh, and talk about it. So we're happy to have you guys aboard for this. Uh, we've had two lists, uh, sorry, two matchups, I should say, so far, which have been kind of fun, interesting, janky combinations. Um, our GNK this afternoon consists of 18 players, which has now shrunk because we've got a few people who've got to drop and get home for Sunday dinner, which is fine. Our elaborate social lives. We don't question them. No, we don't, especially. And um, the remaining players are now um, consisting of some of our friends who are deciding to go to the Rochester Regional next weekend. So they're trying to get some competitive reps in. And uh, one of those people is right here with us. We're joining by the the hair himself, former Canadian Nationals champion Alan Fung. The incredible, the legendary. The denim cool king of X-Wing. Hey, that's such a cool name for him. I don't know why he doesn't get that on t-shirts. I don't know why either, man. And this is a classic Alan Fung rock setup. He loves this tight little cluster. Everything ranged one from each other. Everything was big. Joining us just here in the streaming booth super quickly before he has to take off is the player that you saw in the video that just finished, our triple Star Viper uh, player, Mr. Uh, Mike Reverso. Mike, wanted to thank you so much for the content you gave us. Oh, no problem. Uh, it was a really fun game. I uh, uh, always love playing against Phil as well. Oh, sorry, I don't know if you can hear me from back there. Um, yeah, no, I always love playing against Phil. He's a great opponent, and he um, you know, always brings the fun. And uh, yeah, it was just fun to be flying two very fun, silly lists against each other. You guys gave us a very dramatic finish too, <laughs> yeah, so we yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, it all came down to a single die roll when when you really think about it. So, uh, whoops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the people in the audience almost lost bladder control at that point. That was that was intense. And by people, you mean you, of course, <laughs> yeah, right here. Right. Okay, fair enough. All right, well, gentlemen, uh, thanks for your casting as usual, and uh, I will see you folks soon. We'll, we'll see you at league. We'll play. see you at league night, mate. Yeah, have yourself a good take night. care. All right, so these lists. Let's, uh, let's do Colin Pinkerton first. We got yep. Poe Dameron, Intensity Build, and R2D2, Brian Thrusters, so we can deal with stress, Auto Thrusters, and the Black One title. So here we have the difference between BB-8 Poe and Recharge Poe that we discussed earlier. Yep. Uh, and the Prime Thrusters is still handy here if you ended up against a stress-throwing list. Yeah, there's a lot of stress in the meta right now with stress bots and Assages and... Uh, and all that uh, Rebel Captives on racks and all that fun stuff. So I really think that Prime Thrusters over something like Calm Relay or Pattern Analyzer is the right call here on Colin's part. I think it's a good meta call. It's not going to help him in this match, but in other matches it might. Then we have the Beast on the Rebel side, Miranda Doty. Yeah, the most fair and balanced ship in the game, right, Aaron? She's awesome. I, I love that ship, man. <laughs> she's got TLT, Sabine, Bomblet, and Advanced Slam. I wonder why she's Advanced Slam. Well, I mean, to our viewers who wouldn't know, one of the most recent uh, FAQ clarifications from our friends at FFG clearly states that uh, Miranda's ability to now, um, before she was able to do like a three bank and then a three bank slam, use advanced slam to drop an action bomb, advanced slam has been nerfed so that you can now only perform the bonus action you get from advanced slam with for actions that appear in your action bar. So for Miranda, that's uh, just focus and target lock. I mean, I, I don't, I don't dislike it as opposed to extra munitions or, um, you know, a one-point crew on Rex. What for? Yeah. Right. Um, the well, it costs you two points to put a one-point crew on Rex. So. Yeah, and then you you could turn Prime Thrusters into Com Relay on Poe, but at the same time, we just had that chat. It doesn't necessarily give you more survivability on your Poe. It really actually gives you less if you come up against a stress list, right? So. Um, I, I like the I like the advanced line. It still gives you that defensive focus token if you're trying to bail, right? Um, Collins and Miranda is just pretty bare bones, really. Twin laser turret, Sabine and bomblet, or omelet generator if you're more accustomed to it. One dad joke per game. That's that's my rule. Um, all right, then we got on the other side. Yeah, why don't you run us through Alan's list here? I mean, you're the imperial expert out of the two of us, and you can explain why he's taken some of the upgrades as opposed to other options on Quickdraw and why he went with uh, crews instead of Proton Missiles on uh, 
on the Inquisitor. Sure. Well, let's start with the ones that aren't quick draw. Uh, let's start with the Mega Leader, Classic Build, Jukecom Relay, and the Inquisitor. PTL, Title, Auto Thrusters, and Cruise Missiles thrown in for fun. I'm not sure exactly what Alan's thinking here. It might be for big ships. We'll see if it helps him here. Both of these guys... Uh, well, he is moving He is moving the Inquisitor after Miranda, so Colin's got initiative. That'll make a big difference for using those missiles. Uh, and then he's got Quick Draw with VI, Fire Control Systems, Lightweight Frame, and Spec Ops Training. He doesn't have a tech slot, something in the tech slot, and instead he has cruise missiles. So Alan is looking to hit somebody really hard here. Yeah, PS11 cruise missiles, nothing to shake a stick at. Absolutely not. And I think it's easy to say as well, just uh, having spoken with Alan a little bit, um, he was at Mandalore with this list in the hyperspace qualifier on the Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, oh, geez, who won that, Tim? That would be Alan. Oh. Like 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 a like a shark, he just preyed on all the tired fish at the end of the weekend, <laughs> and just mopped up the scraps. And the best part was at the end of the weekend, at the end of the last hyperspace uh, competition. Something we'll talk about while these two players are playing today is the new tournament structure. By the end of the hyperspace space uh, event, everybody had dropped because mm -hmm. MOV means nothing. And in, in the new hyperspace uh, events at System Open Series, you get the same prizes for going 0 and 3 that you do for going 4 and 2. Right. Was that day. an accident of this particular tournament or is that the standard structure for it? I think it's the standard structure for it because MOV means nothing now. Right. Okay, so in the system, open. in the system open series, yeah. So that, I'm not sure if they're gonna do that for all of them, but I, we really liked it because it let it let people who had bought expensive tickets to be at the convention all weekend the opportunity to play, win prizes, scrub out, and still go to do something else, and yeah. you don't have to stay in for six games for your pride. Um, and I know that speaking to Alan about it, uh, he did win the hyperspace at the end of the weekend. There were two four and uh, sorry, there were two. Five and O's and two four and ones left at the end of the thing. It was Alan, Duncan Howard, and two other gentlemen whose names escape me at the moment. Forgive me if you're watching. The judge comes up, Ian Hamp, at the last moment, says, Whoa, 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 hold the phone, pump the brakes. Wait a second here, boys. The two four and ones have already played each other. Right, so they had to reswap. So they had to pair both Allen and Duncan. How uh, Allen and Duncan were about to play, and I, and I think it's fair to say that Allen would have had Duncan's number in that match. He had a better initiative bid, and he had Inquisitor over. Um, uh, he had a quiz uh, with Duncan's quiz, and he had Omega Leader instead of a shuttle. It would have been a very close match, but Duncan would have been on his back heel, I think. Um, they pair both of them down. They pair both Allen and Duncan down to play the two four and ones. Both of them get a pretty. I would say favorable matchup, mm -hmm. and um, and Duncan and, and uh, Duncan and Allen both ended up winning invitations to the Coruscant um, Invitational. Well, they and, will no doubt have to face each other. Well, out of the seven Canadians that went down, we, we, we nicknamed the tour Vandalore because we rented a van <laughs> and went. Um, out of the four Canadians, sorry, out of the seven Canadians in the van that went down, four of us came home with uh, uh, invitations to the Coruscant Invitational next October. So that was a really great. Uh, showing really great uh, turnout. That is awesome. And, you know, we were really happy about it. So we're I getting... thought you meant Van Vandalore as in you guys are Vandals. Like the, the, the actual group of invading Vandals, right? Tearing across Europe. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just because we rented a van, that was all. Oh, oh, okay. I mean... That was cool, too. But yeah. A minivan with, like, Sumit and me and Billy and, and Cam and, and Alan in the car. It's, it was kind of like a clown car for a good way. It was... you are, you're kind of like Vandals. I have to say that my Tetris abilities came in very handy for packing that trunk. <laughs> um, anyway, getting back to it, when Alan was in the hyperspace event and he had proton rockets on his Inquisitor, one of the things that he noticed the most... God, he just read Colin's mail there, didn't he? What a great call. I don't call. know. I think it's a really good call by... That, that position is a really good call by Colin. So Rex is going to have arc on guys trying to slip into those asteroids. Now, Quick Draw is down here in the bottom right of the screen. Uh, okay, Inquisitor's going for a target lock on Rex. Um, and Miranda, of course, is a TLT, so she's going to be shooting that out. But I think it's a pretty good position. It was a pretty good call to turn Inquisitor as he did. Alan went for a target lock on Rex to show him that he is in range of Miranda's TLT. Right. Well, yeah. That's for sure. It's a very good tactic for using when you're a newer player. If you know that there's a piece that's out of range, try for a target lock on him. It's fully within the rules. Everybody does it. It gives you the opportunity to put that range ruler on the ground and give you a little bit more information 
He'll let you make an educated decision on what you want to do. So who did he lock there? Looks like he's locked Miranda. Oh, and he's pulling he's back out of range. He's got a barrel out. Yeah. Keep that lock for another turn. It's great. You can do a th uh, I mean, he's going to push the limit, which is going to limit his ability to do um, his greens. I mean, th that's the kind of toss-up between the, the talk about proton rockets versus cruise missiles on the quiz. The argument is centered around the same thing, and it's that in this meta, one of the Inquisitor's biggest weaknesses are his greens. They're all very slow, yep. which is a huge problem, especially when you've got big base ships that fling stress like Asajj, or you've yep. got um, dogfighting aces that can talon roll like Fens. You know, you've got this PC Inquisitor who's phenomenally good at taking out ships at range because he's got this great pilot ability that turns off auto thrusters and all this other jazz. Oh, um, look at what Colin just did. Colin being very aggressive with his Poe here. Shredding the BB, uh, shredding the target lock with Inquisitors. Oh, that's why he did it, right? Wow, great move by Colin look there. Look where he's putting Poe. Yikers. Poe's not terribly overextended. Um, you know, you've got the Inquisitor who went, sorry, you've got a Ome uh, Mega Leader, I should say, who has got a probably a two or three obstructing on Poe. Now, Quick Draw did do a um, four straight. A four straight. So if, if, the, Inqui no shot if the Inquisitor, sorry, if Quick Draw barrel rolls here, it looks like he's trying for the target lock and has got it. Um, but does he have arc? I would say probably he no, he doesn't probably have arc. That that yeah, range so. ruler is clearly not on a straight angle. But it's a good setup for later. But as we as we discussed in the uh, in the Annie Obi match in round one, uh -huh. sometimes making Poe use his black one title is effective at getting him out of position, right? So, yeah. we have no. And Allen is one of those players who who really doesn't plan the turn he's in. He sometimes he plays two, three turns ahead of you, so you got to be thinking about those kind of things. Or at least he leads us to believe he's thinking like that. Yeah, often he's just like, no, man, I came up with my list last night. It just happened to win a Canadian Nationals, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Funny enough, it was the first time anybody had ever seen Commonwealth Defenders is when yeah. Yeah, he had been playing. <clears throat> he had a couple of reps with him on Vassal, mm -hmm. but he brought a PALV shuttle and two defenders, and nobody knew what to do with them that game. Okay, so Poe doesn't get any damage through on Omega Leader. Uh, now, uh, Commonwealth Defenders was, before Alan played it, predicted to be the top list by Major Juggler. Well, it was before it was called Common... So just to clarify yeah. for anybody who doesn't know in foreign markets, the reason the list is referred to as Commonwealth Defenders is because the list won both Canadian Nationals that year as well as the Australian Nationals which are both British Commonwealth countries. Colin rolling all the evades there. Yep. My goodness. Um, so as a result, that's kind of what the nickname it got picked up on, which is better than something like, you know, OP cubed. I don't even know what the hell that, you know. Oh, well, they're all three of them are OP, so it's OP. Wouldn't it be OP three then? I don't, I don't even know. OP cubed. What a weirdo. So what's Poe going to do here? Just saying, though, the Inquisitor has these cruise missiles. I don't know if he's ever going to be able to use them. He's pushing the limit every time. Poe's shredding those target locks. I mean, I'm sure Alan's saying to himself, Christ on a cracker, I wish I had a proton rocket right now because the focus token is the firing trigger as opposed to a target lock. Because that, um, that uh, Black One title is going to cause Alan all kinds of problems here, right? It is, yep. Now, Alan can one turn the Inquisitor and barrel roll him up and try and catch Poe out of arc, doing a one bank to Poe's right. The Poe might just say NFG, no fucks given, and go straight, or four straight. Yep. Or he yeah. might do a three turn to his right. Go after Quick Draw, yeah. I mean, possibly. he's got Miranda heading to that direction. Quick Draw target locked Poe so that Quick Draw could very easily do something like a three turn this turn and, and get into it, or a three bank, or what have you. Yeah. Um, I think a bank. I think getting a quick draw stressed at this point would be lethal for her. I mean, she's got to watch out for Miranda, right? I mean, Miranda will just take two shields from her as though it nothing. Well, that's the thing about quick draw is you have to be. I've, I've used quick draw in matches. You've used quick draw a ton, yep. so I'd love to talk about this. Quick draw is a piece that is going to survive uh, the wave twelve meta next week. You're going to continue to see quick draws. It's an incredibly Absolutely. point efficient bang for your buck heavy hitting imperial piece it's 
fully loaded, even with a without the cruise missile, it's 34 points. That's a that's a Carnor Jax. That's a Suntir Fell. That's one third of an Aces list. That's a viable piece. And it's a double tapping PS11. That's really what she is. Oh yeah, not to mention the back arc. Yeah, she fires in two directions. Um, I mean, a lot of the, the 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 argument can be made about backdraft. I love backdraft. He's but, cool. But as long as you have shields on quick draw, it is essentially like having another ship in your list. Yes, so when you take something like quick draw and you pair it with a palp shuttle, and now you're getting uh, sensor clusters and you're mitigating all this uh, shots, and you get to pick and choose when you actually lose a shield token to be able to control when you're firing back. It just it just presents uh, this entire element of unpredictability to your entire Imperial list that a lot of people just don't see coming. And then on a turn when you weren't ready for it, quick draw shoots forward ice at you and you're pooched. Yeah. Now you gotta t remember to take your target lock with FCS. Can't forget to do that. Write that shit on your thumbs, man. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, a few more glasses of blue milk in here, folks, and I'm starting to let the profanity slide. If you're watching our stream from home with young children, then... Uh, you're raising them right. You're raising them right. Yeah, you're watching X-Wing on a Sunday evening. I tell you, last night my wife and I were watching the Leafs because we were trying to hope that the Leafs were going to sweep the West Coast. Mm -hmm. So the Leafs took Calgary, they took Edmonton, and they had Vancouver last night. What a game to watch. It was such an exciting match last night. Uh, I don't know if anybody from our West Coast is tuning in tonight, but if you are a Canucks fan, uh, good on you. Your team earned a, earned themselves a hell of a win last night. Rex doing a two straight, getting right in behind Poe there, getting ready to suppress somebody. It's a good call. Even if he doesn't have arc, he can uh, turn to the right next turn and get some arc. Aaron, you know, you uh, another piece you've used more than I have. I'd love for you to speak for a minute about going into the Wave 12 meta with um, Rex as a... Oh, that's a very... You know what? I love that move because he's probably expecting Quick Draw to turn into the fight here. Yeah, he's really banking everything on calling Allen's moves. So my imagination, or does Colin have a Captain Nim base plate? Yeah, he does. He has a Captain Nim base plate for his Miranda. It's got a barrel roll to emblem on it. Oh, nice. <laughs> Is that just because he doesn't want, in case he wants to swap Miranda out for Nim or something yeah, like that? Yeah, he'll do that mid-game. I'm going to drop and bomb with Sonya. It's like Shiktok or Visago 2.0. I could actually change my ship halfway through the game. Classic Pinkerton. Yeah. For those of you who aren't aware, uh, or may be tuning in from foreign markets, uh, the Pinkerton brothers and their, uh, their loyal associate, Mikey, yeah. have attended nine store championships this year all over Ontario. They are three, They are just three of the like highest quality humans you'll ever meet. Three just top-notch guys uh, who are really friendly and great X-Wing players. I believe our friend Colin, who is on right now, is a teacher. One of them is a teacher. And Kyle is in design of some sort. I'm not too sure. I know that one of them's a teacher. He's got a beard like a lumberjack, but yeah, I don't know. It doesn't mean much. This can't yeah. tell anything. So, hold on. Alan just moved the Inquisitor. Quiz is going a, in for the block on, on Poe there. He took a target lock and got himself the free of aid, and he put his stress token down, but he didn't take a second action as far as I can see. Is there a focus token there? Did he, he target locked. It? Yeah, I know, but he gets two, right? Let's push the limit. Uh, so, yeah, he one-turned... He basically the Inquisitor was where Omega Leader is. So he one turned, he boosted, and he target locked. Oh, he boosted. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right. So he's got to decide where Omega Leader is going to take his lock. So for anybody who is chiming in on the stream, either on Twitch or YouTube, we just to remind everybody, uh, V Double TV Live, doing their absolute best to provide top quality streaming content, have provided Aaron and I uh, with an overlay of the chat, so we can see what you guys are chatting. Uh, we can uh, chat back and forth with you. I do challenge anybody who is watching the stream to chime in with your best Alan Fung chirp. Um, yep, it, go for it. Go for it. I mean, we have a lot of them. Show him your chirpy love. Yeah. We, he, uh, he almost willingly gave away the national championship title one year later to Bohan because he was so sick of us uh, chirping him at every stage yeah. that he was so ready for it. We got a block on Poe. Yeah. 
So Pinkerton and Alan have played together before. Um, they both uh, know the question will be whether or not Poe's on, on the rock. Ooh, I think Poe's okay. I don't yeah, think, I think, so. I think he's all right. We'll see you in a moment. That is bloody close, though. It is. No judge call, so I think they're agreeing that Poe's not on the rock. That's fine. But he can't strip no locks. Yeah. And what did Quick Draw do? If you call things right, and she hard, if she does the hard three right, then it's cruise missiles in his face. Oh, well, I don't think so. Alan read Ooh. Colin's mail. Or the other way around. Colin read Alan's mail, but unfortunately it wasn't far enough. So Poe's going to get a shot on Quick Draw, unless Quick Draw barrel rolls out of Poe's range to take a range one on... Uh, on Miranda. Wow, that was a fast game. Billy just finished his game. Somebody died quick. Yeah, it looks like Billy's got to drop out, though. Not everybody going to be able to stay for bad. round four. So we have a shot from Quick Draw. We have three hits on Miranda. Wearing them all. Yeah, and she doesn't have... Nope, she does not have C-3PO. Alan changing his FCS to Miranda. And that's good strategy, I must say. Alan now has all three of those sexy six-win... Uh, sorry, four, five, and six-win... System Open Series 2016 target locks on Miranda. She is, or I should say, Nim, Nim, Mar, Mar, Marim, Nim Miranda. So is Colin going to take the shot on Quick Draw? Is he going to risk Poe triggering Quick Draw's ability so close to Miranda? I yeah, I mean, Poe can just opt not to shoot here as an option. But if he, if he does shoot Quick Draw and pings him for a shield... And Miranda's running the risk of getting a crit in early in the game. And there's still Inquisitor. And Inquisitor's already taken a shot. No, Inquisitor isn't shot yet. It's Poe po shooting first. Sorry, yeah, Inquisitor definitely has arc on Miranda is what I'm saying, though. Yeah, so we'll have, I mean, that would be three more shots on Miranda. I think Colin has opted not to shoot. Yeah, yeah. that's the right, it's the right call. call here. Okay, so Inquisitor taking his target lock, re-rolling on his shot with Miranda for one hit. One. And Miranda, <laughs> shh, dodging it. Dodges it. Gotta love a K-Wing, don't you, Aaron? And we got hit crit from Omega Leader at range three. Uh, she can't uh, mod because she is locked by Omega Leader. Wearing the crit, and thanks to our sexy VWTV Live overlay, we're gonna get that crit up in just one quick second for you folks. I believe it's Stun Pilot, if I read it correctly. Yes, no. wonderful. Okay, so Miranda doesn't much care about Miranda that. doesn't like getting blocked much as a, on the hole, and she's about to get uh, right out of dodge in there anyway. Rex shooting looks like range three on Omega Leader. Miranda declined. Oh, yeah. uh, hit crit, needs a fifth die. Evades it all, but where's the condition? Where's the condition? Yeah. yeah. So Omega Leader is now down to an amusing one die <laughs> which Miranda cannot mod against but it is only one die <laughs> hey man sometimes a mega leader only needs one die because you can't do anything about it yeah it's kind of like shooting at a ghost you're like well it's not really about what their defense dies do it's about what my offensive dice do great turnout today here at 401 eh, Aaron I'm looking around the room here I'm seeing tons of people uh, we've had a few people drop out but it looks like we've still got around 10 or 12 players at this point mm -hmm for round four after this. We're going to try and bring you the top-seeded table after four rounds, uh, see who makes it to top four. Sorry, top two, I should say. But uh. All right, so what do you call here for the for, for Colin, Tim? What's, Colin's calls? at a bit of a tough spot, I would tell you. I mean, quick draw, quick draw can come about. I mean, if quick draw gets arc on Rex and Miranda, that would be ideal. Um, I think that Poe... Oh, so useless where he is. That that boost to shred the Inquisitor's target lock has costed Colin a considerable amount yeah. of positioning um, in a time when he really didn't need it, which is right early off the hop there. You know, it's 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 great time actually to bring up one of the points I wanted to talk about today, Aaron, which is uh, you know the whole point of today was you know PTL players coming out here, bringing their competitive lists, and showing a little bit about the scene that you can get in Toronto. You know, if you're living in Barrie or Windsor or, or whatever, maybe not Windsor, probably like, you know, Guelphish, and the one-hour drive is worth it, you're going to get a great set of competitive matches when you come into these GNKs in the city. And one of the things that we wanted to talk about today is something that was actually just prevalent in the match we just watched, which is point counting. You have to, as a competitive player, maintain a firm understanding of what all the ships on the board are worth 
and most importantly, what they will be worth if you change your target priority at three stages in the game. At the sure. be after turn zero, so beginning of turn one, right about now, about the 50 minute mark, 45 to 50 minute mark, depending on where the planning phase lands. Mm -hmm. And then with, with 15 minutes to go in the late game. So here we are, about halfway through the game. I mean, we're 25 minutes in, so probably another 10 minutes before we're halfway. But we're we're far enough in now that... Seeing that bomb let go down. Yeah. Now, tempting as it is, Miranda needs to get to, to slam. Miranda needs to get to shooting. Miranda needs to both recharge and get into this game um, from a shooting standpoint. Taking a back arc shot from a tie FO is better than taking a front arc shot from a tie FO, so I imagine Miranda will probably just focus up here. And the Inquisitor can't three turn to shoot his crews at uh, Miranda because he'll have no target lock. Now, if Alan is daring, he's planned a sloop to the right with Quickdraw, and he'll just take that bomblet. She'll just, the Quickdraw will just take the bomblet damage, lose a couple shields, and shoot, shoot the crews, the, shoot the crews, and, and still get the primary run. shot. Yeah. Um, and that would be an utter and complete smash. Total Alan Miranda. fun move. Yeah. One turn from Quiz keeps him well out of bomblet range. Yeah. yeah just going to token up. Wrong. I think Colin did have to slam there just to get out of that corner. I don't, I, I say, man, that might be range two in arc. Sorry, range two out of arc, so the auto thrusters would still apply. My bad. Okay, so two bank from Omega Leader here. Really gums up any options for Poe. Yeah, it's principally just to block Poe. I mean, Omega Leader's down to one puny die with this shot, so who cares where he's pointing so long as he blocks. Yeah, Omega Leader's going to stay suppressed as well because Rex is going to get a shot at Omega Leader. Yeah. Uh, or Rex will change that suppressive fire condition yeah. card to somebody else, but ultimately, you know, it ain't going to matter too much. And even the quiz is three straight. Followed by a boost. I don't think he's got a follow-up cruise missile opportunity on Miranda after this turns over. Um, again, anybody who's just tuning in, uh, we've just actually bumped up over the 50 uh, viewer mark. That is not Nim. It is a Nim base plate, but it's a, it's a casual G and K here in the city. Well, casual-ish. Casual um, not really casual lists, but casual competitive. Casual, it's a competitive. casual environment with competitive, competitive lists. Uh, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, that, that is Miranda, not Nim, just so everybody's clear. Um, looks like we had a quick end to a few matches in round three here, and we've already got people uh, standing up around the stream table trying to watch uh, the hare himself battle with Pinkerton um, for our round three action here. So getting back to what I was talking about, about points counting. Yeah. What do you normally do? Like, for, for a newer player that's chiming in, so, like, Obviously, turn zero, turn one is where you decide your target priority based on how the ships have gone down and deployed. I need to decide where I am on the board, which target I'm going to prioritize, what that target is worth Check in terms of, out. oh my goodness, is Quick Draw going to have arc on Miranda yeah, after so. this? Yeah. yeah, okay, plenty yeah. of all the arc for days. He's just going to take the bomb load damage, lose all the shields, and kill the hell out of Miranda. Yeah, if, if Quick Draw loses all his shields in one go here, that may not be worth. I mean, he's going to get a four-die cruise like missile what? shot. 40% uh, chance of that? Okay, so Alan's going to roll the bomblet on quick draw right the heck meow. Looks like we got blank oh. focus. So now it is Colin's opportunity to choose to Sabine quick draw Sabine and take two yeah. shots or not to. Colin has seen the opportunity. He is opting to do so or not. Looks like he has done so, and he is shooting... Oops. That is that is an Alan Fung roll. Wow. Even Alan turned around and said that was an Alan Fung roll. All right, doing the one, taking a hit and two crits on Miranda Doni. If one of them's a direct hit, then Miranda's going down. Uh, we're going to find out what those crits are in just one second. Uh, first one has turned. Second one has turned. Neither of them direct hits. Uh, looks like we are going to have Miranda with some seriously bad conditions. Major hull breach. That's always hilarious when you're on one hull. Free one there, basically. Quick draw doing his uh, primary shot at range three. FCS for hit crit. And that's a dead Miranda. Oh, Miranda knows he evades and lives. Looks like Mar uh, the quiz is going to get the glory here. Yeah, I mean, in the end, it doesn't much matter. 
Yeah, I think it was safe to say that if if Colin hadn't Sabined um, Miranda, then this is good. So Colin has decided to trade Miranda dying here for the rest of the shields on quick draw. That's the right call. Okay, so we Sabine the one. There's another shield ping. And there's a double TLT. Colin really needs this to go through. Recharge the shield. Interesting choice. Quick draw wearing the damage. All of quick draw shields now down. That actually really helps. Looks like Alan forgot lightweight frame on that second roll. Oh, no, that's right, because he rolled two dice. No, of course. Like yes. Oh, and Alan is blanking out the Inquisitor. He gets only two. Sorry, he didn't blank out, but it's unlucky. And Miranda's dying. Miranda's dying. Okay, so Miranda has not dying. No, she's dead. She's dead. Okay, the, the hit when they have three again. Sorry. It was yeah. two. It was next I mean, if she'd rolled, got lucky and rolled a natural evade there, she would have lived. It would have been the most resilient K-Wing. But she gone. Okay, so... Allen on the board with 42 big points right off the hop. Um, he has traded the shields off of Quick Draw. Quick Draw now has no shields. Uh, we'll get that overlay updated in just a second for you folks. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're playing Quick Draw, and this is the kind of choice you make, well, am I prepared to lose all my shields in one round to take Miranda off the board? The answer is always going to be, yeah. I, I There isn't much I wouldn't trade for a Miranda. Exactly. I mean, you, you sometimes have to trade whole ships, two ships together. Well, I mean, this is a great thing. So I wanted to talk about this today. We can take this opportunity for it. So you were asking me about the um, the differences now in the way that tournaments operate. W with MOV not mattering anything, Quick Draw taking a damage sensor array there. Which awesome. Isn't too big of a deal because he's usually got that FCS anyway. Oh, that's true. Um, and he spent his cruise missile at this point, so we'll get a. a He's also been suppressed. The suppressive token has yeah, moved over to him. Yeah, and we'll get a we'll get a uh, a line crossed through quick cruise missiles on quick draw in just a second as well. But yeah, I mean at Mandalore, one of the things that really jumped out at me the most is now that MOV doesn't matter. Now that you don't. And what I mean by MOV not matter, MOV matters when you when you win a game, like in terms of points killed on the board. Over the course of the day, your level of anxiety is a lot lower because you're not worried about, oh, is somebody else doing you know the same number of wins but better than me? That's that a good outcome. I mean, worrying about MOV is always very distracting. It's very and distracting, and absolutely. But we've got to be specific here. It's only in the system open format as it is now that MOV doesn't matter, and it only doesn't matter as much. If you're going to a regional, it still matters. Yeah, so at a regional, it's it's different because it's not several events in, in a day kind of thing, right? They still operate under an MOV cut. The the Toronto regionals that are happening on January the sixth, which I believe VWTV Live has already signed up to do, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you guys have signed up to do Toronto regionals already, so they will definitely be casting um, all of the uh, the X Wing action from uh, Toronto regionals that day. Which is great. We also want a reminder for uh, for our friends here that they are, I believe, next weekend doing an L5R cast. Sunday, Sunday of next weekend, they're going to be casting an L5R event for those people who are getting into uh, FFG's crack at a competitive card game. I mean, not yeah. that not that Destiny hasn't taken off, but you know, I'm just saying. Every time FFG comes out with a new uh, game and it's awesome and popular, I, I totally resent it because I, I, I don't want to lose all these good X-Wing players. Stop taking away our X-Wing players. Stop it. Stop it. Actually, that was one of the things they were saying uh, on the stream about uh, Spanish Nationals uh, yesterday and today was they actually had somewhere near 100 players not play X-Wing to go play l 5 Road instead. So it's a real thing. It's a real thing, this, this, this L5R, L5R seepage in the X-Wing community. At least Armada's not taking our play, our players away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's 450. <laughs> there's 450 players at Madrid for L5R. Wow. And there was uh, under 200 for the X-Wing. It's crazy. It is. And, you know, at at, uh, at Mandalore, it was a similar situation. There was, like, eight rows of Destiny players. There was only 130 um, X-Wing players for the main event. Now, that's, to be fair, two things. A PAX Unplugged three-day ticket was extremely expensive mm -hmm. as well I think FFG announced Mandalore like a month ahead of time so there's going to be another 14 system open series is announced across the world mm -hmm. uh, I believe North America gets nine of them mm -hmm. we're all 
waiting with bated breath to hope that one of those ends up in Canada. Every part of us is clenched. If you're a Canadian X-Wing player, every single part of you is clenched waiting for this news. Canadian Nationals in March, which I hopefully will be able to attend this time. Uh, we've got that. I mean, there's uh, regionals all over the place. Thunder Bay did not get a regional this year. Two regionals happening in Quebec. Mm -hmm. Notre ami uh, qui vient de la province de Quebec, c'est bon. La um, belle province. Oh, la belle province de Quebec. Um, Speaking of that, Tabernac, regarde, qu'est-ce que Rex fait là? Oh, Rex fait une, uh, une deux à la droite. Vas-y, Rex. <laughs> Vas-y, allons-y. Je pense que Rex vraiment peut tuer Quick Draw. Est-ce qu'il y a quelqu'un qui viewait ici uh, aujourd'hui qui vient de France? Est-ce qu'il y a? Non? Okay, that's it. Uh, we'll go back to English. <laughs> Instead of embarrassing ourselves any further. Okay, so, yeah, no, Rex can totally kill Quick Draw here. So going into the Wave 12 uh, meta, um, Aaron, let me ask you this. Do you think the viability of four ship lists of any faction are still going to be there with things like the Rebel Bomber, uh, with things like um, what the Rebel Bombers are going to do for Nims and Mirandas, uh, what... Um, you know, with, with the uh, with the fact that Kylo is so expensive, um, oh, ho, ho. is that a 4K from the uh, Omega Leader? Alan is not going to let Rex solo kill Quick Draw. It's a ballsy move. It is. I mean, Poe's way out of the fight up there. It's going to take him two turns to come about. So this is Alan's chance to take out Rex. Did the Inquisitor not take an action? Uh, I think the Inquisitor hasn't moved yet. There's still a oh, no, right. no, he has. What is happening? I'm so lost here. Oh, okay. Oh, I see what happened. He asked Colin to uh, do the K-turn for the other ship. Fair enough. Um, so, wave 12. Will there be room for four ship lists? Uh, I mean, Rebel four ship lists? I don't think so. Uh, Rebel four Rex, ship Rex isn't a mini bigs anymore, you don't think? I don't think the, the models of uh, the lists built around the FSR, various FSR models... Uh, are going to be hugely competitive. I mean, they might still be very good, but I don't think they're going to be off the cuff hugely competitive. I think we've got triple lists uh, with trip bookies, which are, are going to do quite well, uh, continue to do quite well. Um, sorry, just a sec. Is Poe going to use Prime Thrusters? He is. What's he going to do? He's doing the boost to get arc on somebody. Okay. Has Poe got his target lock on Omega Leader or on Quick Draw? I want to say Omega Leader. I don't know where it is. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's Omega Leader. Yeah. So I think the four ship rebels will be in our hearts, but I don't think they'll be bad. Uh, I think it'll just take some work to make them competitive. Um, and that's largely because of harpoons. Harpoons are really causing a lot of... I mean, they... I think that one, the one thing that really needs to get errated by FFG is the the interaction between harpoons and a twin laser turret at the moment. Yeah. Because when you put the harpoon missiles on the Skurgs that have TLTs, the way the rules are written, the the, the, the if you roll a TLT and there's a crit result, yeah. you're only putting one damage through, but technically it's an uncanceled crit result, so it triggers harpoon condition. Yeah. So I think that definitely needs to be addressed. Okay, quick draw just did an Allen Funk roll. It looks like three hits against Rex, but I thought, oh yeah. And Rex. Rex isn't liking that. to take only one, or is it two? Looks like he's taken one there. Uh, it's one crit. Aaron, but it's oh, a direct hit. It's a direct hit. Yeah. Yep, Rex is not in a happy place right now. Good night, Billy. Okay, well, let's get a shot on quick draw. It's range three, through the rock. Futzing around here. It's interesting target priority choices that Alan has to do at this point. I mean, you really want to get rid of Rex, ideally, and then just have your whole list against Poe. Yep. Poe gets two hits and quick draw. Might I think I think Poe's shooting at the quiz. He is, yeah. He gets. He's got two. He's fine. Yep. Totally fine. Yep. Those are donations. Yes. John Han Solo coming to the streaming booth. How you doing there, big guy? Father of Uncle Plutt's Scrapyard, the inspiration for my quad jumper at the hyperspace final. The, uh, the what do they call it, the, the quad jumper that fell heaver. It was uh, quite quite the afternoon, I must oh, say. Oh, Rex is down. 
This isn't looking too hot for our friend uh, Colin over there on the stream table there, Alan. No, it isn't. Or Aaron, I, I think it really came down to that slam where he slammed Miranda. He did the, th the three bank and then another three bank, and he ended up just just a hair from blocking Quick Draw's yeah. one straight. That was, I mean, it was a great call. Like he called what Quick Draw was going to do. He was, it was just like he was off by a hair. I mean, yeah, he, so really, he really needed that, that bump there. If he, I mean, any, or what he really wanted ideally would have been Quick Draw doing a two or three turn to go into the middle after um, uh, the rest of Allen's ships or for quick draw to go quickly mm -hmm. with the uh, attempt to get that cruise missile. But I think Allen has played against Colin enough to mm -hmm. anticipate some of his shenanigans. Yeah. Shenanigans. I swear to God, I'll pistol whip the next man who says shenanigans. Bye, John. Hey Farva, what's the name of all that? Uh, what's the name of that restaurant you like with all the goofy stuff on the walls and the mozzarella sticks? What do you mean shenanigans? Oh. <laughs> uh, your movie references, man, they're, they're, they're vast and encyclopedic. I've seen far too many movies. I worked for a Cineplex. It was my first job, from the age of 15 to 17, mm -hmm. and then I worked for a Blockbuster for 18 months. So I've seen my fair share of movies. Do Blockbusters still exist? They do in other countries. They don't here. Yeah, that's good. They were well, terrible. When I was in Australia, a Blockbuster had already closed up the majority of its working in North America. But there were still Blockbusters in Oz, which was cool. It was also extremely awkward when I'd walk into a Blockbuster to rent a movie. And I'd be like, oh, hey, cool. I'm just glad you guys are still here. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, North America, there's no Blockbusters. They all closed down. Oh, that's awkward. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope you guys still have a job in a week. But anyway... Getting back to our action here, it looks like Allen can probably do anything he wants to close out this game on Poe. I mean, Poe uh, yep. po has to now kill the whole list. Yep. No, he doesn't. What am I talking about? If he kills... Two-thirds of it. If he kills Quick... Well, he can finish Quick Draw, but then he needs to kill one of the other. He needs to kill two out of three of them. Yep. And uh, once the Mega Leader gets that lock on Poe, that becomes really hard to do. Inquisitor is hard to kill every day of the week. See, I really think that going into the next meta, I think it's really fair to say that some of these Imperial uh, Aces lists can really start making resurgences. I mean, you've Absolutely. got the gunboats coming out, and everybody's really gaga about them. I and mean, I'm really excited about the, the, the mobile cannon platform for the Imperial exactly. faction. I think that the increment of increase uh, that the, the Star Wing represents will be so significant that you just plug one Star Wing in three ship imperial list yeah you'll bring your attack dice up overall by one maybe two maybe it's just a question of them being better at range but they're also range denying because it's usually ordnance or cannons exactly and there you go i think that will push the imperials into a more competitive strata vis-a-vis -vis all the big scum ships which is really what you know uh is hurting them oh, i yeah. guess the rebel turrets as well well, yeah, I mean, like, I think that a lot of thing that other people are really uh, missing out on as well is the viability of, you know, uh, what sort of list building dynamics you can actually. Oh, sorry, what? I think Quick Draw just arc dodge Poe. Oh, that's rough. And fixed her damage sensor, right? I, mean, of course. I can't quite tell. I mean, it's very close, but. I think Quick Draw's back right corner is still in, but that's a, that's a micron. I mean, from it, was angle. The, it was a beautiful call by uh, Colin to try to get that arc. Okay, do you want to do it? We're going to get a judge call, our friend Tristan, uh, who's obviously going to side with Colin on this one. Yeah, the, the out-of-towners. They all hate us Torontonians. They do. Especially because Alan's wearing his loud and obnoxious PTL shirt. Thank you very much, Sam. Appreciate it. Oh, look out. We're going to get a judge call on whether or not Poe has Ark on Quick Draw. Ideally, Poe really, really, really wants Ark here. Yeah. If yeah. Poe has Ark on Quick Draw, it's Quick Draw Colin's no opportunity tokens. to get back into this game. Yeah. Um, I think it's probably just a hair out. I can't tell. I can't tell either. So Tristan's going to make the call here in a second. What I was trying to say, sorry, Aaron, about the gunboats is I think a lot of people don't realize uh, about how much viability they have in four-ship list building. So a row squadron veteran, which is the one that is PS4 yep. uh, with an EPT, is 27 points 
when you load it with either sorry if you load it with a, a concussion or harpoon missile it's 27 points before the EPT or it's 20 uh, sorry 26 points with a manga uh, cannon Colin had to shoot at the Inquisitor he Ooh, did eh double just trip evaded my god the Allen Fung dice somebody needs to go float those Allen Fung dice in, uh, in salt water because they are uh, oh you stole Jackie's dice that makes all the sense the Jackie Long's dice they're for those of us who don't know Jackie Long the man's dice are cursed by a witch doctor uh, he took them to Africa one weekend and had a witch doctor curse them with the soul of a demon so that they always roll only what he needs at the right time. Like, if you pick them up and roll them, they'll just roll normal. But when he needs trip of aids and he's got no tokens or mods at all, he'll just roll trip of aids. Did Poe just lose two shields? He did. Yeah, I think Poe's, uh, Poe's in rough shape here, mate. Oh, th- I mean, Alan's dice are genius. Uh, I'll be right back. All right, Aaron's going to go check on... Uh, whether Alan is in fact uh, um, using dice that are illegal here, no, I'm just joking. He's using the bathroom. So we were talking about uh, we were talking about the viability of the gunboat in the meta, and just eavesdropping like a jerk as he walked past the uh, the stream booth table here is uh, Anakin Skywalker from the Obi Annie match round one here today, uh, Mr. Sam Ross. Sam, how are you today, sir? I'm pretty good. Thank you for coming into the city with your dad. It was great to have you guys. Yeah, I got a bit salty during the first round. Well, nobody likes that. Uh, Aaron and I were talking about how, you know, both of us when we were kids used to play against our dads a lot, like in chess, and our dads <laughs> never let us win. But ultimately, it makes you a better player, mate. Yeah. How'd you do the rest of the day after you played your dad? Uh, I've been doing pretty well. I won both of my other games. Congrats. You're going into round four then. We're good. Yeah. Well, what uh, Sam was overhearing us talk about before, Aaron, was the viability of the uh, of the gunboats, and he's just shown me a list on his squad builder here. It's four new squadron veterans, the yep. PS4 ones. Uh, they all have plasma torpedoes, unguided rockets. The news are PS2. Sorry, yeah, they all have plasma torpedoes, unguided rockets, and guidance chips. So, I mean, that's great. I love the idea of being able to take two of them, an aggressor that has either a TLT or some sort of turret, and then a viable, like, cheap ace, like a budget Vader or an imp one. There's going to be a bunch of really viable four-ship imps coming out of, of that. Out of the Star Wing, basically. Before the end of the day, too, we'll have to go through the Kylo uh, copter, as we're calling it, and the something like 60 variations of loadouts that you've concocted uh, with combinations of the EPT system and tech loadouts on him. I didn't even do them all. You haven't even done all of them yet. You've only done like the VI expertise push the limit ones at this point. So stay on target. Oh yeah, stay on target. All right, thanks, Aaron. Uh, I find that opportunist is pretty good in a lot of lists too. I think it's underused EPT opportunist. Yeah. Yeah. Once you remind our viewers what opportunist does. Um, basically, if you're shooting at somebody and they have no focus or evade tokens you can take a stress and get an extra attack die a great EPT against Wookiees and it it works for secondary weapons too that's the thing it's not only primary yeah I mean for a lot of people they think four points on opportunist is a huge cost for opportunist but one of the hugest advantages that Wookiees have in the meta right now is the fact that their reinforced token doesn't work for Juke it doesn't work for Wes Jansen it doesn't work for a lot of those pieces but usually they only have one op- one action, and it's the reinforce. So you take something like Opportunist against a Wookiee, yeah. and that's the best way to burn through that um, that reinforce token is to up your red die count. It's a great suggestion from uh, from one of the youngest players in the room here, folks. Another thing that I noticed is I, I made a little A-Wing swarm. I love A-Wing swarms. And it's, that, and it's that swarm leader is not unique. So with A-Wings... You can put two on the same ship and get an extra four attack dice if you are so inclined. I'm sorry, could you repeat that for me? <laughs> so wait, Swarm Leader is not a unique EPT. No. So with the A-Wing test pilot title, you can put two Swarm Leaders on an A-Wing. On, yeah. Like and then if you have four other. evade tokens in play, you can up your A-Wing to six die. Yeah, at range anything. Well, at range one, it's seven dice. I'm incredibly <laughs> embarrassed that nobody has thought of that yet, Aaron. I didn't notice it was non-unique. Uh, I guess, you know what, you only get one copy of it in the, uh, the pack that it comes in. The striker. In the striker. Yeah. 
you don't really buy more than well, I haven't seen people buy. You, you haven't hung around the you haven't hung around the PTL enough, man. We have so many like striker janky lists going around, but that is a great swarm leader interaction. I'm a huge fan of swarm leaders. So I'm going to try that at some point. It's seven and four fives too. It's not. So you put Jake Farrell with two copies of swarm leader. Shard and Reef at a wing tile. A greenie with VI and, and trick, trick shot. shot. And then they all have. They all have trick shot and VI. Yeah. And they just evade all day long, and you have four <laughs> evades in it. That's brilliant, man. That's nasty. <laughs> I love it. You were seeing a great call by Colin. He did a talon, and then he boosted with his prime thrusters, again showing the power of prime thrusters. Prime thrusters yeah. over, yeah. I love that. It's uh, just unfortunately, Alan is. Sloopy. It looks like Alan is going to pull a sloop here. To exchange shots with Poe, which actually, yeah, really does favor Poe. It's really quite good. It's like. Yeah, because Poe's going to be able to take his licks from quick draw here, yeah. recharge afterwards, and yeah. be able to finish off quick draw with simultaneous fire. So, quick draw rolling four dice. She's got no lock. Huh? She's got no lock, so it's three hits. Poe's wearing two of them. Oh, dear. Two shields down. Oh no, that goes through. We had the we had Poe's damage count wrong. Poe's wearing that crit. Looks like damage cockpit. No, Ribbon. weapons failure. Oh, just what Poe didn't no. need at that point. That is rough. Okay, so Colin rolling the three. Poe's ability to get three in. That's what he needs. Alan needs a really good roll here. Gets, and he's dead. Okay, yeah. So quick draw off the board, getting Colin on the board with 37 points. The score being 56 to 37 with 24 minutes left means that Colin has to both recharge and clear a crit and finish off Inquisitor or Omega Leader at full health. That's a tall order there, boys. And Omega's shooting at him through the rocks for one damage, but Poe cannot watch him, but he's okay. He's all right. Okay, so Poe not going to have to worry about his thing. I uh, don't know if he did there. Hmm. Oh. Omega Leader looks like he doesn't have a lock on Poe. He does. I think he took it an earlier round. Oh, no. It looks like he spent it or he's oh, okay. lost so it at some point. Points. I'm sorry, I was so captivated with the double swarm leader jank on the A-wing here. I got distracted about where Omega Leader's target lock went. Oh. They don't have blackout or any of the other stuff. Poe cleared it with black one. That's what happened. Of course, yeah. Keeping a target lock on Poe is like keeping Jello nailed to the wall. It ain't going to happen. I really like some of the lists you're showing me on your phone here, uh, Sam. But really, I really want to ask you, if you don't mind, is talk to me a little bit about... So one of the reasons we wanted to get you and your dad on stream is to talk about how great it is to see members of the community playing with uh you know family father and son combo but i guess what i really want to ask is how have you as a younger person i mean you're not that young you're a teenager so how have you as a young man been able to get any of your friends involved in this game or is it just one of those things they prefer video games like i had that problem a lot of, a lot of them prefer video games but i've i've gotten like two of my friends to play uh, one of my friends has played a base, like a starter game and a, an actual game. And then another one of my friends has just played the starter game. I gave him Snap to, to start off. And fun I, fun ship to start with. And I had Epsilon Ace and an Epsilon Squad pilot. Epsilon Ace is, is really fun because you just, you can arc dodge a lot. Uh, because he's pilot skill, pilot skill, yeah. Until 12. yeah, yeah. Until I love I love giving Epsilon Ace um, uh, the targeting synchronizer, so that you can bring a bunch of PS2 bombers at PS2, but then Epsilon Ace has the target lock at PS12. Huh. That's, that sounds really smart. I, I've never thought of, thought of that. Yes, I've never thought of that. You never thought of that one? No. <laughs> well. I mean, one of the funny things that we all love doing in our community in Toronto is coming up with, like, the jankiest of jank sometimes. So it's easy for you to be around that kind of stuff and pick up on some of well, it. Well, I have a squad of three T-70s, and none of them are Poe. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, – so the guy who was on stream just before this was Mike Reverso. He came here today with three Star Vipers, Dalen, Gurry, and Thweek. Yeah. But he's the one who's famous of it. He, has, he, has, uh, he created this three T-70 list. It got pretty popular. It was a stay on target, Nyan Yum, a push the limit snap, and uh, a Jess Pava with Engine G8. What have you got in your three? I have Snap, Nyan Nun, Blue Ace. Oh, Blue Ace. <laughs> He's the one who can do a boost with a turn, right? Yeah. 
and so he has R2D6 so that he can take an NEPT. That's what, yeah, that uh, Astromech does. There we go. And then I gave him primed thrusters so that he can He can do that one turn boost even when he's stressed. I love it. Yeah, and integrated Astromech because why not? And push the limit so that he can do the one turn boost and like focus your target lock. Or I like it. I like it. And then we have Snap with Better Instincts, Flight Assist Astromech. Uh, oh, the new the new droid coming out next week in Way 12, Flight Astromech. Yep. Uh, what does it say again? After you execute a maneuver, if you did not overlap a ship or obstacle, and there are no enemy ships inside your firing arc at range one to three, you may perform a free booster barrel roll action. God, T-65 X-Wings are going to love that too. I just realized that it says you cannot attack ships outside your firing arc. So you can put this on a BTLA-4 Y-Wing. Correct. And now have a good reason to run a BTLA-4 Y-Wing. There's more than one. I mean, the stress bot Y-Wings are, are really pretty good. But. Well, yeah. But other than the stress bot. Right, yeah. I mean, BTLA-4 on more than one ship is pretty pointless. I'll like, agree with you. Yeah. Hey, hey. I have a, I have a uh, Y-Wing list here. And it's, and it's two gray squadron pilots with a uh, dorsal turret R2 Astromech. And both at BTLA-4. Okay. And... I'm probably going to switch it to Flight Assist Astromech. Probably, yep. And, uh, yeah, fun. And then I have a Green Squadron pilot, and I'm probably going to switch this BSF to something else. So what was the first thing that got you actually going out to events with uh, with Scott? Was it that you just wanted to tag along and see what the competitive scene was like, or you felt like you were good enough to roll with them, or know, what was the I, story? I just kind of wanted to hang out because he said he had a bunch of cool friends in Windsor. And, so. of course, he lied, and we're all nerds, right? No, this isn't Windsor. This is, this, is, this is Toronto. But. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, and since you've been going with your uh, with Scott, he, he tells me that you make top eight more than he does. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's fair <laughs> enough. And he usually rocks up with some pretty good, like, rebel jank. I saw him when I ran into you guys when we were all in Sarnia. He had, um, what do you have? He had two Y-Wings, two X-Wings, <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. It was three, two T sixty five X wings and two Y wings, and that was pretty. Uh, Ooh, real, uh, and then Solon, spooky. Solon brought the buzzsaw list, which was like five, five Y wings with, uh, with all with auto blaster turret, and that was rough. So it looks like Inquisitor continuing the pursuit of Poe here. Poe down to two health, gonna have to find a way to recharge, and it looks like he hasn't even cleared the weapons disabled crit yet. He needs to continue to take those focus tokens. Otherwise, he's just going to get shot at and mangled by the Inquisitor here. Okay, so Poe going for the four straight to get out of range. Give him a chance to clear the... Uh, I stand corrected. He went for 4K. <laughs> I thought he was going to go for a four straight and try and clear that crit, but it looks like uh, Colin is giving... Um, interesting. Boosting back into range three... Not the choice I would make against the Inquisitor, no, but it's range one. all of his shots are at range one. No, no auto thrusters for you. Yeah, it's it's also one of the things that makes Thweek so uh, dangerous. Is if he copies the if the Inquisitor, the, it, if he yeah. copies the Inquisitor, now he's basically an HLC running around, which is super dodge. Except it's an HLC that also works at range one. Without, and, and you don't need, and you don't get auto thrusters at range three. But exactly. Like, again, yeah. We got three tie SFs. I've never seen anybody run three tie SFs. Oh yeah, I, that happened. I yeah. I don't know why. They're, they're Quick draw, backdraft, uh, Omega Specialist. Yeah. I have the Omega Specialist with ruthlessness, so that if Quick Draw gets within range one of the enemies, he just do, takes a shield off of Quick Draw, and Quick Draw gets two shots per turn. I see that list a lot more with Omega Leader as the third ship because yeah. it gives you an extra three or four points to put on your SFs, but it's not a bad loadout at all. Oh no. All, all of them have Twin Islands and Mark II, which is admittedly not the best modification they can have. But it's pretty good on SFs because I don't think any of their banks are green. Their their one banks might be green, but oh yeah, yeah, their one banks are green. Their one banks are green, yeah. But that's it. Now you know I wanted to talk about one thing today that you're actually going to help me prompt. I wanted to talk about uh, traveling for X-wing. So it's the last thing I'm going to bother you with until. Uh, we get Aaron back in the caster's chair here. Sorry to interrupt, guys, but uh, this will be the last round we're streaming. Okay, sure. We're going to close up after this. All right, folks. So we wanted to just, uh, we are going to actually have a round four today, but it looks like we're going to need to 
pack up the equipment before the venue closes today on Sunday evening. So this will be the last round of uh, action coming to you live from 401 Games. Um, we're going to be wrapping up the game probably in the next turn or two. My guess is the quiz is probably going to be able to put one damage through on Poe here. If not, a, uh, an Omega leader, or sorry, a Omega leader taking a three turn here will probably do it. But a huge thank you again to VW TV Live uh, for, for cast, casting our GNK this afternoon. A uh, huge thank you to Aaron, my wingman here, um, we stream. And thank you, Sam, for stopping in and giving us some perspective on, uh, on a young person's view on X Wing. And it's like I was saying, man, keep traveling with your dad and keep uh, showing up these events, and you're going to be uh, the Canadian Nathan Idy in no time, man. You know who that is? You've known Nathan Idy? Yeah, good man. Okay, good. He's kind of like the, uh, the unofficial new generation X Wing guy. So I haven't met him yet in person. I hear he's quite tall. But, uh, he looks looks pretty tall. He looks pretty tall, yeah. Um, this, this is the last uh, last concoction from, from Sam's. Okay. Replace Kanan with, with Maul, though. Okay, fair enough. So we've got a old Chewie. No, new, no, new Chewie. I love it. VI to PS7. Ezra and Maul. Love it. An engine upgrade. And then you've got a Snap Wexley with VI, Prime Thrusters, Integrated Astromech, Flight Assistance, Black One. Great astromech for <laughs> snap wesley there and a zeb tie fighter okay with sabine's masterpiece and inspiring recruit. see i don't mind that at all i love um a, a just a naked sabine tie fighter with intensity i would have i would have liked to have rex in here but if with with the points i want it i yeah, yeah, Rex in a bid isn't a bad idea, especially with Snap at PS8 with all the Mirandas and quizzes and stuff. Yeah. A one-point bid's not ever a bad idea. Okay, so we've got Poe. Looks like Poe is blasting with his boost through the quiz. Love seeing a boost through another piece. It happens so seldom, seldomly. Colin looks like he went for the... Three straight recharge followed by a boost. Still wearing his condition uh, crit with the weapons failure on it. So it looks like he's trying to just come about and get his crit cleared and get his, uh, his self back in the game here. Omega Leader's still going to be able to take what looks like a ranged three shot on Poe if there is arc. And that's a tough call for arc, but I think Omega Leader probably has arc still. I think he might just clip him. Fair enough. Yeah, it might just be in. We'll know in a minute. It's not the best way to measure it, but... Uh. <laughs> no, but you know what? With with two players like these guys who have played each other long enough, they're just going to call a judge anyway. Aaron's going to get in there and uh, and measure the last of the... Uh, we're just going to get... Um, yeah, we're going to get the Inquisitor out of there so we can get a clear line of sight. This is going to be close. He might be out. <laughs> Yeah. Just going to wait for an official call. Looks like we have um, a shot coming from Allen. No, we're going back to Dials. No shot from the uh, no shot from Omega Leader. He, he is out indeed. One more uh, one more round to live from Colin. Okay. Well, I mean the um, the tournament scene over the next couple of months is going to be pretty exciting. We've got Christmas not far away. Between now and then is the Rochester, New York regionals next week, which is one of the reasons so many of the competitive lists showed up today. We have a lot of people who are planning on going to that, get some practice reps in. January 6th, Toronto regionals. I'm probably going to that. You guys are coming in for that. Wonderful. We're expecting at least a couple hundred people. Um, well, I mean, the face-to-face -face games is doing regionals again this year. Yeah. Uh, they did it two, yeah, they did it last year as well. Uh, they did an absolutely fantastic job. It's going to be at Seneca College. I believe the tickets have already gone on sale for it. So if you haven't bought your Toronto Regional uh, ticket yet, please go ahead and do that. Um, that's the other thing we forgot to talk about today, Aaron. The Toronto Regional tickets are on sale. Oh, they're up now? Awesome. It's okay. We have plenty of opportunity to do so. Looks like Alan's going to close the net on... Uh, on not Colin much. here. Tighten the noose. Not with a weapons, not with a weapons malfunction here. He's not just shooting two dice. Yeah, I mean the combination of uh, black one and intensity makes Poe a great counterpiece for Omega Leader. 
but Omega Leader still gets the juke. So it's it's kind of like Posability and Juke and Black One, and they all kind of balance each other out. So it's essentially just like a T70 versus a Tie FO. Um, I think that might be it. I think that was the Inquisitor shooting at Poe. One shield and, yeah, he had one result there. So. I mean, this is, this is the end game for so many uh, generating Poes. It's like you're running away, there's a couple of ships behind you, you can't turn back around, you regenerate just enough to live. It's a very tough thing. And, you know, like the flight assistant droid is not going to do Poe any good. Um, you definitely want to always load out Poe with either BB-8, R5P9, or R2-D2. Those are pretty much the three droids that are staple to Poe. And much to Alan, sorry, much to Aaron's point, when you get your Poe into the late game like this, and he's he's limping away on one uh, on one or two hull, and he, he can't afford to not boost, take a token, and turn around the following turn. Uh, it's it's in a huge problem because you know like here that this Poe can. He can three bank and boost and take his focus token, and he's still at range three, but he's never going to be able to turn around. And if he does, he's not clearing his weapons malfunction crit. Yeah. He's not getting an offensive shot, and the offensive shot's not even guaranteed to do any damage. Well, the Prime Thruster's Poe is in a slightly better position because he can talon roll and boost. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I agree with you. But, uh, I mean, the two guys he's fighting are no, no easy marks. Up there at full health, and that's this is brutal. So the last thing that I wanted to ask any of our loyal viewers who are chiming in, or for anybody who's uh, who's who's watching the stream after the fact, um, is is what other content that, that uh, we the PTL or VWCB Live can be like. We have the, we've had the uh, idea of trying to put together a PTL podcast being bounced around. We're trying to curious about what sort of content we can discuss with the the public that. People are not getting from other podcast sources already. Uh, I think that it's fair to say that we have a plenty of perspective on the meta that may not be really out there, but um, you know, there's plenty of things that we could talk about. So, if you haven't uh, if you haven't commented on this video on YouTube or posted to the Prototype Toronto League or Star Wars Gaming on Tamer on Facebook, please feel free to give us your feedback and input. We love it. Indeed, where did Poe go? Poe Talon rolled into the corner. He's in the very bottom right-hand corner, trying to create a pursuit vector on the two aces. I don't know if I would have boosted there, but you know what? He has to, to get his, well, he has to get his token, yeah, of course. Yeah. tokenless, and Inquisitor just straight kills him. Uh, now, he might have come in inside the Inquisitor's arc. I think he's okay. I think he's out of arc on the quiz. If he is, it's by a Micron, and it would be ideal. He's only got two attack dice. Yeah, he's only got the two attack He's still got the weapons malfunction token. Those are the results he needs. And the Inquisitor takes the damage. Wearing his token, just fine. Another one of our streamed victims from today, Philip Gales. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Thank you for the Webble, the Rebel Swarm. Always love seeing one of those. It was absolutely my pleasure. Hilarious. The rare things the game goes on. Pinkerton and Alan slunging it out in the late game here. You would you would well know what a like a Poe chasing a Riot in the late games like, wouldn't you? <laughs> Nothing like Poe chasing Riot in the late game, and there's like what was it one point difference between the two of you? It was it was midnight to like one a.m. Midnight to one a.m. Just the two of you just chatted around. Lone Wolf Riot. That's right. It was a Lone Wolf Riot against the Recharge Poe. <laughs> It's like two people just like slap fighting each other until one of them gives in. Just not happening. All right, my friend. What do we got here? We got Poe. Poe shot and missed, and the ace is shot and missed. Oh, look, the Inquisitor took a shield. Poe's making headway. Uh, Lord of Britannia. Unfortunately, no, this is not the finals. This is round three of four. Sadly, we're not going to be able to cast the next uh, round. We're going to have to pack up. Uh, and get out of here before the uh, the store closes. So this is be the last of the rounds we're going to bring to you live today. But we encourage you to tune in next time. Um, 
the PTL Prototype Toronto League is going to have our Season 10 uh, top cut after the new year. Because yeah, the, the season right. runs until pretty much just after Christmas. Yep. And then we're going to do the cut fresh in the new year. Uh, we're looking forward to it, of course, because the Wave 12 ships will be legal for the top cut. Um, and then we're going to look at some pretty exciting uh, matchups in that. A glimpse of what the meta will look like very shortly before Toronto Regionals on January the 6th. Which VWTV Live will also be casting. So look forward to more content uh, after Christmas uh, from our friends at uh, VWTV Live. Will we come to you live or recorded? Yeah, I may I may O2 drop Toronto Regionals and cast the day. I'm not sure yet, but um, if I end up doing it, hopefully uh, you're available. But I know you're going to probably want to take one of your fantastic imp jank lists that you're going to come up with. Kind. I'll scrub out the Swiss and be available for casting. I didn't want I didn't want to go there, dude. <laughs> All right, so we got the Inquisitor coming in, looking for a kill shot. Does he barrel roll back towards the board edge, so as to have coverage regardless of where Bo goes? Or does he stick where he is, hoping to block stuff? Oh, he's going behind him. I mean, Alan is taking this casual game kit play, and as always, he's playing like it's like the last round. <laughs> of a cut at a big tournament. Just playing long term. Just playing a long game. That's how you win imp games all. Oh, for sure. <coughs> you design your lists so that you've got when you lose one of them, yep. you've got more than a point fortress big ship or two other ships on the board. Right? Alan has lost a ship and he still has um, you know, sixty three points on the board. So Colin goes for the unexpected hard three. Sorry, he's got 60 points well on the rest. That's right, because he's got a huge bid, my fault. Yeah. So. Okay, so they're just going to decide about whether or not Poe. No, he definitely bumped. Okay. Poe definitely bumped. We're, uh, we're off to the next round. Well. The, um, I think we managed to cover most of the topics that we wanted to today, Aaron. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about you know mid game moments, late game point counting. Um, we didn't get to talk about some of the. I found the list archetypes that we felt were going to survive uh, wave. Where are we now? Nine through eleven. Yep. But I mean, we, we can do that. I think that. When tr when when Wave Twelve comes out, you're going to start talking about seeing some things that you maybe be seeing just a couple of times here. We're going to become a little bit more competitive. With things like Triple Skurgs, things like Wookies, things like you know Three Star Vipers, like we saw today. And you may not have thought had a place when you know Torp gunboats and Asajj and all that fun stuff was everywhere. But I really think that Asajj is very present in the meta right now. But with what's about to come out next week things like being able to fling a bomb forward with five forwards are going to make your shadow casters just evaporate. We'll see. I mean, the thing about Wave 12 is when I look at it, I really can't tell what the heck is going to happen. It's hard to make predictions. There's a lot of variability in the builds for these ships. I mean, just looking at builds for the TIE Silencer, there's a huge amount of things you can do with that ship. Um, and, you know, there's not that much you can add as wing people to Kylo, but if you go with one of the cheaper ones, Blackout, you've got more variability there. If you decide to go with the PS6, you might have more there, and you might say PS6 is a bad idea. Well, is it really? Against Wookiees? PS6 is kind of godlike. Well, is it fair to say that there's no one best build for Kylo? I think that there is no way. I mean, it depends on your playstyle. Like, people will argue, well, let's give him FCS over advanced sensors because it'll give him the action economy. Well, no, advanced sensors is better because now I can, I can barrel roll. Uh, out of arc, but that'll yeah. depend on what pilot skill you are. Did you take adaptability to 10 or VI to 11 or stay where you are? Did I do push the limit so I can advance sensors, double action, clear it with the stress? You know, did I take advanced optics so I have a banked focus token all the time? Did I do, um, did I do the debris d uh, gambit so I can take comm relay and uh, uh, evade tokens? Uh, and that's a bad thing. You wouldn't do the debris gambit because then your comm relay would stop you from being able to take two evades. It's true. But you know what I'm saying? What did you calculate? How many combinations of 
EPT system and tech were there for the Kylo Copter that you saw? Uh, I made 25 builds for Kylo Ren. 25. And that's not including, so every time you, you make a build for Kylo Ren, you can decide, okay, uh, am I going to put First Order Vanguard on it or not? So that's not counting the cases where you don't put First Order Vanguard on it. I love the title. It's two points that are kind of like an auto-include for my mind because it's, it's insurance, right? Mm -hmm. Anybody here today flying aces can probably attest to the idea that there's that one turn where you blank out on your green dice We've that you would have traded. Final shot from Mega Leader here on Poe, and it's nothing. And so the game has gone to time, and that's it. 